Let's talk about marathon mistakes. Over the past 10 years, I've ran many different marathons and I've connected with thousands of athletes around the world who've all ran a lot of marathons as well. And I've definitely noticed several common mistakes that keep coming back, not just in my own personal racing, but in some of these other races from other athletes as well. So let's discuss what are some of these common mistakes and what can you do to avoid them? One mistake I see frequently is not having a race strategy. In advance, if you have a specific goal time, for example, you're trying to run sub three hour marathon, you know your average split is gonna be six 50 minute mile, or it has to be six 50 minute mile. And so at the beginning of a race, many people start out quite fast. They feel really good. And so they might be hitting six 30 minute miles, six 20 minute miles. And so actually having a race strategy of I know I have to hit six 50 minute miles on average, but I don't allow myself to go faster than let's say six 40 minute miles. It can really help reserve some energy for later on in the race when things get tough. If you don't have a specific goal time and you just want to run by feel, that's totally fine. But do make it a strategy to at least hold back to some extent at the beginning. So you're not going to run by feel and just go out fast because your legs feel so great. It takes quite a bit of marathon experience to realize what it feels like to have energy left in the tank at the end. And so to truly hold back at the beginning, so later on you can actually finish a race strong. So, so when you go into a race, actually knowing this is gonna be my goal time, this is gonna be the splits that I'm gonna hit for, and then actually going out and executing and being well disciplined to actually follow your race plan. Of course, there's gonna be ways that you can adjust the plan. And if things work out towards the end, you can always pick up your pace at that point. Don't start too fast. One of the most common mistakes I'm seeing out there. Another common mistake that I see is not having a nutrition strategy or a hydration strategy. And this is absolutely crucial for a race. In advance, know what your plan is. How are you gonna intake calories? And actually knowing as well, on the course, what kind of hydration are they gonna have over there? Are you gonna stick with water and bring your own gels? Or are you gonna drink whatever energy drink they might be providing? And have you actually trained with that as well? For example, for my last race, my strategy was to drink water at pretty much every aid station and to take a gel every 30 minutes and a salt pill every hour. And then to remind myself, I would set an alarm on my watch every 30 minutes to go off to make sure I remember to take in my calories. So before your next race, make sure you know what are you gonna do nutrition wise? What has worked for you in training? And how are you gonna execute that on race day? If you're gonna rely on aid stations, that's all good and well, but make sure you've done your homework. The third common mistake that I see is athletes dressing way too hot. You wanna be cold at the beginning of a race. You wanna be standing at the starting line and actually feeling freshy. What you wanna do is dress for mile three. Once you're warmed up, that's when you wanna be comfortable. You don't wanna be hot over there. One strategy for me for races is that I go to a thrift store the week before. I buy a, a long pants, long sweatshirt, and I wear that all the way until five minutes before the gun goes off. And then I take it off and I put it in one of the clothing donation bins around the start line. That way I stay warm until the beginning and then I'm cool at the beginning of the race again. If you dress too hot, your heart rate is gonna increase faster. And so you wanna make sure you keep it cool. The fourth common mistake is not knowing the course. Always in advance of a race, study the course. Where are the aid stations gonna be? What is the elevation like? One thing that I do is I go on Strava, see if there's a previous race um, elevation profile. Because if you look at how other people have raced it in the past, you can really get an understanding of how old the hills are, what their grade is, how steep it is. And so study that course so you can mentally prepare for what's to come. For example, for the Boston Marathon, it's really nice knowing when heart rate, heart break hill or some of the other hills are gonna come up. 
this goes hand in hand with point number one of actually having a race strategy. So truly studying the course and knowing what to expect, it's just gonna bring a sense of calm over you. So the more things that you can control on race day, the better, because there are gonna be some unexpected things that you already have to gonna work through. Then last but not least, most common marathon racing mistakes that I see is trying new things on or around race day. Race day is not the time to try and experiment new things and even the days leading up to it are not. And so this is where training runs come into place. You don't know how your body is going to react to certain nutrition, to certain hydration. Um, for example, some of your socks or shoes might actually start giving you blisters. And you find these things out on long training days. You don't want to find that out two hours into a race. Another example. Oh. Really loud truck. <laughs> Another example is if you've never ran in a certain shirt or shorts or a hat before, then don't race with it. If you've never trained with those sunglasses, you don't know how it's gonna be in an actual race. It's one thing that it feels okay 30 minutes into a training run. But then if you're actually two hours into it, that's when some of these things are gonna show up that you haven't previously experienced. I've personally experienced it. I've taken some energy bars that I thought my stomach would totally be able to handle. I took it out on a long training run and sure enough, it gave me really bad stomach cramps. I had to use the restroom right away. You don't want that to happen at mile 20 of a race when every single second counts for you in order to hit your uh, goal time. So definitely make sure do not try anything new on race day. One other thing to mention about nutrition. If your race starts at let's say 7 a.m. and normally you want to eat two hours in advance, make sure to test what it's like to wake up before 5 a.m. to consume a meal at 5 wait two hours and then start your run. Once again, long runs come into play over here. To summarize this video, make sure you have a race day strategy and don't start out too fast. Number two, make sure you have a nutritional strategy and a hydration strategy. So know when you're gonna eat and drink throughout your race. Number three, don't dress too hot. So actually dress for mile three. Number four, is know your course. Actually know where the hills are gonna be, know where the water station are gonna be. And number five, I just forgot number five, so I gotta look back at my notes. I know again, number five, don't try anything new on race day. So go out on several long runs and test your entire race day strategy execution, so there's not gonna be any surprises there. I would love to hear from you what are some of the marathon race mistakes that you have made and have experienced and what have you done to overcome this? Please let me know in the comments. Thanks and uh, have fun out there with your races. Good luck guys. Later.